partly it's climate change now, and we're seeing in incredible changes, and particularly the penguins, I think of, them, think of them as ocean sentinels, and they're telling us how fast the Earth is uh, changing. But of course, the real elephants in the room are the increasing human numbers and our consumption, and we affect almost everything on, the, on this Earth. Even though you think about penguins as only being re in remote places, they're being affected by people too. Well, penguins eat fish, and uh, penguins eat almost anything that's smaller than their head. So as long as it's a small fish, they'll take it. And of course, what we're doing as, as humans is fishing down the food chain. So we're really hoover vacuuming the oceans and taking most everything out that's edible. So we take anchovies, we turn them into fish pellets, and we feed farm-raised salmon with them. Those are, of course, anchovies that penguins could eat too. So as we continue to fish more and more down the food chain, there's going to be more competition between our fishers and penguins. Just like any birds, penguins have a variety of uh, successful and unsuccessful years. When they have successful years, it's because there isn't usually a lot of rain. One of the changes that we're seeing with this climate variation is some years where we get a lot of rain. And when there's a lot of rain, particularly in a desert environment like Punta Tombo where these Magellanic penguins breed in Argentina, it fills up their nests. And so it's like living in a swimming pool. And if you uh, are a penguin and you're a chick or an egg, you don't like living in a swimming pool. So that causes really a lot of reproductive failure. And we're seeing a lot of those events. The other problem is penguins are having to go further to get their food. So the cost of living for penguins is going up. Now that we have some protected areas, particularly these provincial reserves to protect these penguin colonies, what's happened in the last couple of decades is that the penguin populations in those protected areas have declined and they're actually moving to other private land areas. So they're moving, they're voting by their feet. So at the largest colony that I study at Punta Tumbo, we've seen birds that we've banded as chicks that now have shown up at colonies 500 kilometers to the north and that's where they've settled to breed. So just like, you know, people may be born in Chicago, they may end up spending all their life in San Francisco. There are really three things that people can, can do with these incredible changes that we're seeing on the globe. One is we can try to reduce the human impact and the, in, the human influence on these things. The other thing we can do is really be proactive. Try to figure out what do we need to do it and do it before it needs to be done. But that we're not very good at that. We tend to set up conservation policies that are static. We put our parks one place and we hope that they'll stay and protect the species forever. But what we're seeing, particularly with climate change, and it's already here and it's only going to get more, that penguins are already voting with their feet to go to other areas that are not protected. So that's the real challenge. How are we going to protect wildlife and try to balance their needs with this incredible demand by humans as we continue to increase our consumption in numbers? And so if we want to have penguins, one of the things that we really have to do is to be able to manage people. And if we can manage people, then we probably have a chance of managing penguins. And if we don't, then the third alternative is that we both suffer. And I hate to see penguins or people suffer.